And how about uh, future eruptions? Uh, do we have any ideas? Will there be sooner? Because now it's been 15 years since the uh, really the eruption, uh, uh, apart from the submarine eruption, but it's been 50 years. In the future, can we know if there will be more eruptions? This is a very good question. I'll quickly share my screen. I hope this yeah. works now. I hope you can see that. Can you see my screen and the table? Yes, I can see it. Wonderful. Let me just see whether I can make this a little bigger. So here is the historical eruptions of the Canary Islands. And okay. uh, we had an eruption on La Palma in 1585, 1646, 1677. Then there was a break of a few decades, and then there was one in 1712. And then there was a long break of over 200 years, and the next one was 1949. And then quickly afterwards, one in 1971, and now one in 2021. So yeah. there seems to be rhythms, but uh, we have too few data in order to really appreciate what the long-term rhythm is. And therefore, we can only use the statistics from these six or seven eruptions there. So, and uh, including the new one, it's seven. Now, if we do the calculations on uh, this, then the statistics is, it's statistics of small numbers, I'm afraid, but it says yeah. that the probability of an other eruption in uh, the Cumbre Vieja is about 50% for the next 50 years. So within the next 50 years, there is a 50-50 chance of another eruption, but there may also be none. That's the reality. Yeah. So there could be another 200 year gap. There could be only a 50 year gap. There could be only a, a smaller gap even. So um, what I am sure about is that there will most likely be another eruption on the Cumbre Vieja, but we are not entirely sure when, and that okay. is the big unknown. Okay. And uh, how, how was and what was the effect on the local population of this eruption? Because it was really, I mean, the images we all saw all over the world were, were really um, sad, but impressive also. Uh, all the lava that was flowing and all the houses, but also the plantations. So what were the, the effects on the local population? Absolutely. This is exactly the issue. I mean, uh, this is this... Uh... How to say, this is this uh, dilemma that we face with volcanoes. And let me see, I, I tried to get another slide for you. I have a little summary slide here. Um, this is this uh, dilemma. It's the beauty and the beast or the terrible beauty as it's sometimes called. Of course, it's fascinating scientifically speaking. On the other side, it can cause great suffering for the local population. And in this case, the eruption was in a very densely populated area. The 1917 eruption, uh, 71 eruption, uh, was in the southern end of the island. It was far less populated. So there was very little drama uh, apart from the natural beauty. But uh, this eruption was very different. And um, so I trust you can see my screen now. I think I lost you now. Let's try again. Can you see my screen now? Yes, I can see it perfectly. Wonderful. So the eruption lasted for 85 days, and that means a lot of people had to evacuate their uh, homesteads, their houses, their properties for a long time. If you had a business, you couldn't run your business. That's a big financial loss. Almost 8,000 uh, 8, people were evacuated and uh, more than 2,800 buildings were destroyed. Of these, uh, 1,300 were houses and then uh, 1,500 or so utility buildings. Almost uh, 1,000 hectares of plantation and farmland were uh, covered. Of this, about 350 hectares by lava, that's irrecoverable. The rest yeah. by pyroclastics, by tephra and ash, that is hopefully recoverable, but it's a lot of work. Then there's over 70 kilometers of vital roads that were cut. And this, of course, is a major infrastructural problem. But the good news is there was no direct loss of human life. And that's a okay. huge achievement for an eruption like that. But 
the estimates in terms of the damage are on the order of 1,000 million euro, a billion euro. Okay. This is a huge amount of money that got lost and for a small island, this is uh, devastating for the economy. Yeah, and yeah, indeed. And, uh, and more specifically about the agriculture parts, there are a lot of uh, magma and I don't know if you can call it magma, the, so the black thing that you see on the lands, will it ever be, uh, will we ever be able to use it as agricultural land again? If so, is there a process to turn it back into agricultural land? Well, this is a very interesting problem. It actually is a problem that was previously observed in the Canaries when you think back to the 1730 eruption on Lanzarote. What they noted back then is that areas with a thin, lever, uh, um, a thin layer of ash or defra, as we call it in science, uh, the ash and little particles, the little stones, um, if it's a thin layer, yeah. it's good for the land. If it's a thick layer, the plants will die. So the trick is to have only a thin layer. So for areas that were far away that have a thin layer, this will in the next few years be good for the plants. But okay. areas that are close to the volcano where the layer was thick, that's bad. And there the ash might need to be removed. And uh, ultimately the ash can be reused. It can be reused in agriculture for spreading it on many areas. In part, it could also be spread on the new lava delta, that's the land in the sea, the new land. So they add a lot of this ash, they could make it fertile if they want to do that. But okay. um, another way of using it is you can use it in buildings, in building projects. You can use it as a concrete supplement. And uh, we currently use a lot of aggregates, a lot of solid material to supplement concrete. And um, this might be something else because uh, the ash that's been removed from the roads has been piled up in large mountains. And yes. this, I think, will be used for building uh, supplements in the future. 